dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hello, my merry band of O-Satters, and welcome to this incredibly special festive edition of the Sockmetician podcast. My name is Nathan Taylor, also known as Sockmetician here on Ravelry, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Periscope. Although Periscope... Not really using that a great deal. Anyway, I decided I would have a little bit of a change of scenery today because I wanted to show off the wondrousness of Kitsch, which is mine and Ben's uh, Christmas tree. We like to throw everything at it. We've got boxes and boxes of, uh, of decorations that we've collected over the years, and uh, there's no thought goes into it. It all just goes on the tree. Some of these things... For example, I made these about 20 years ago, the little matchboxes uh, covered in paper, wrapped up all neatly. Look, I've got like hospital corners on the edges, all wrapped up neatly and tied with some silver string, and they just get placed on the branches, and I love them! I'm a really big fan of Christmas, as you may or may not be able to tell. And uh, this... <laughs> I'm starting to feel Christmassy, only just today for the first time. It is the 20th of December, so it's Tuesday the 20th of December, it's Christmas Day on Sunday, and I haven't had a chance yet to do anything festive. In fact, I completed my Christmas shopping today, well, I say completed, not quite. Um, I've still got one or two bits and pieces to get, but I don't know when I'm going to be able to get the time to do that. It, it feels like a really, really long time since I podcasted, and I feel like I'm a little bit out of the habit, and all of that is to do with the same reason why I haven't been able to do my Christmas shopping. It's because I've been incredibly busy with work. It's been a very, very dull time for me. I've uh, I've started working at the Southbank Centre in London. Uh, it's only a 10-week uh, contract, and I think I'm now seven and a half weeks through it, so we're nearly there. But the show that I'm working on has just opened, and my... Uh, I'm, I'm working with the ticket agencies and getting all the ticket inventory sorted out. It's terribly, terribly dull. It's a lot of staring at computer screens. It's a lot of looking at reports and paying in tickets and making sure this balances with that. And it's really, really it's driving me nuts. But it is keeping me very, very busy. Um, I've, I totted up my hours. I think I worked... I'm not having days off at the moment. I worked, I think, 49 hours there... Um, I did a 10 hour shift at my other job at the Shaftesbury Theatre, uh, where I'm still keeping that job open. Um, and I also went up to Northamptonshire and did uh, a crazy corporate gig one evening. So that's all in the space of one week. It's, it's, ah, oh, I don't know what to say. I, I come home brain dead. My, literally my not literally, figuratively, my, before the new grammar ranters get on board, figuratively speaking, my brain is dribbling out of my ears from staring at this stuff all day, um, and I'm not getting breaks for lunch, I'm just sort of working through, because I'm the only person who can do it. It's all terribly dull, but that's the reason why I haven't been podcasting as regularly as I would like, but I really, really wanted to squeeze one last episode in before Christmas. So, are you ready? Are you doing any Christmas knitting this year? I'm not. Um, last year I did quite a lot. This year I'm not at all. And that's that's quite deliberate because I knew I wasn't going to have a great deal of time leading up to the festive season this year. Uh, and I was right, as it turned out. More right than I could have imagined. So it's just as well that I'm not. Um, I also think it's a good idea to let people get get wanting knitted gifts again. <laughs> rather than just doing it every year. But are you busy? Have you been doing all of your knitted Christmas loveliness? And how are you getting on? I know for a fact that I was knitting my nephew's brioche scarf uh, last year up until 
about 11 o'clock at night on Christmas Eve, I literally took it off the needles and put it in the wrapping paper and went to bed and handed it to him um, the next morning. It was it was down to the wire. So I know, golly, don't we put a lot of stress and pressure on ourselves at this time of year for, for us knitters? And I often, I often think we do that to ourselves and, and I wonder if if non-knitters really, really appreciate what goes into a knitted gift. And I know that's not why we do it. We do it because it delights us to be able to give them something that we've made. And hopefully it delights them at the other end. I don't think people have necessarily a particularly strong idea of exactly what goes into the planning, the prep, the buying of the yarns, the selecting of the needles, the sourcing of the pattern, the figuring it out, the working out the yarn and the and the gauge and changing measurements and extending pattern repeats, all of that stuff that goes into making a hand knitted gift. It's it's a lot, isn't it? It's a real it's a real labour of love. I you all know this, you're all knitters. You know that when you give somebody a knitted item, not to mention the time that's gone into it where every stitch has been made with love, there's a lot of love in it. And I think sometimes I I sort of wish people could know exactly what it has taken to create such a gift. But then, again, in the spirit of altruism, maybe maybe that's not what it's all about. I don't know. Um, so I have been flat out, as I said. I did manage to do some shopping online one evening. Uh, it's Tuesday today, so Friday, I think. Friday or Saturday night, I was home and I managed to get a, a little trawl through Amazon. I've never really done that before. I don't know where to find all the stuff. I'm not very good at looking at... Uh, just I, I sat down, I made a list. I've got a big family. There's lots of us, lots of people to buy for. Lots of people I know have birthdays over Christmas as well, so I need to double up on the presents because I'm never ever going to give someone a joint birthday and Christmas present. That's just not fair. Um, my birthday's in June. It's so far away from Christmas. June the 30th, no less. So it's exactly six months away from Christmas and no one could ever combine my presents. So why should I do the same for anyone else? Um, excuse me. I'm still a bit poorly. Uh, not as bad as I was in the last one. So I'll probably be tweaking out the, uh, the cough moments as I did on the last episode. And that was some weeks ago. I'm now seven weeks into this. Um, it's been... A hideous virus which has gone all the way through my body starts off with a huge chest infection. The cough is ongoing. I've had the fever, shivers and shakes and the uh, the, the, the burning sweats uh, at night. I've had all of that. I've lost my voice. I've, uh, I've had stomach problems. I've had all kinds of things. It's literally just moving around. And at the moment, I, my glands are still swollen and it hurts a little bit to swallow, although it's not really a sore throat. Um, and uh, I'm still have, I've got the, still got the residual cough, which is a pain. Um, worse mornings and evenings. So of course it's now the evening, and I'm recording this, so I, I will probably be coughing a little bit as I go along. The more I think about it, the more I talk about it, the more I want to cough. So let's move on from that. I am definitely getting better, just not as quickly as I'd like. It's been a couple of months ever since I got pneumonia when I was on my holiday uh, honeymoon with Ben in San Francisco. Uh, I think my chest has has got a bit of a weakness and, and any chesty things that go around hit me a little bit harder than they used to. Maybe it's just age. I am, after all, 42 and a half. <laughs> Going on eight, clearly. Eight and three quarters. Um, so, uh, yes, I did some uh, online shopping, which I've never really done before, and I, I haven't had a chance to look at the boxes that have arrived. It's all done through Amazon and stuff. It doesn't necessarily all come together, so I don't know if everything has arrived yet. I'm hoping it has. Um, and then I shall be heading off. I'm working all day tomorrow. I'm working all day on Thursday, and then on Friday, which is the twenty third, I am uh, working all day, and I don't get a chance to leave work until about seven in the evening because I need to, I need to be paying in the last minute sales and things that are coming from the ticket agencies before I can close. What I do is call closing the show, um, and and signing off and marking everything back and giving it to the duty managers who will run the box office that night um so uh, the show starts at 7 30 so i can't really can't really conceivably finish at about seven o'clock and then i will be it'll be a long day it's two shows that day uh and then i will be 
zipping home, which takes me about an hour from where I work, uh, and jumping in the car and driving three and a half hours up to, well, three hours up to my mum's house to see her because I'm not going to be getting a chance to see her on Christmas itself this year. This year, my mum and her partner, Ron, uh, are spending Christmas with his family. And it's the first time he, since he and my mum have been together, it'll be the first time he's had a chance to spend time with his children and grandchildren. So, uh, although I will miss seeing my mum on Christmas Day, I think it's a really great thing that they're, they're, she's giving it back to him, giving Christmas to him for his family, which is wonderful. I think she's a little bit gutted that she's not going to be with us. <laughs> In fact, I know she is. Um, so I'll be seeing her on the 23rd, but I probably won't get there till about 11 o'clock at night. Um, and I will try my utmost to spend half an hour, an hour with her, giving her her birthday present, which is back in October, her 70th birthday, but I still haven't had a chance to get, to transport what I bought for her to her, so she hasn't seen it yet. So she'll get that and we'll exchange Christmas presents. And then Christmas this year is at my sister's. Ben will uh, have gone up with his parents earlier on that day. I'll meet him in Shrewsbury and we shall, uh, once I, the problem is I'm working on New Year's Eve, uh, Christmas Eve, I'm working, thankfully I can do everything by remote. I can log into the work system from my laptop. So the morning will be spent doing all of that. And then uh, I'll join them in Shrewsbury and we'll do some last minute Christmas shopping and maybe get some mulled wine and mince pies as we walk around. Shrewsbury is beautiful, lovely little medieval village, really, a uh, town. I don't think it's a city, it's a town. Beautiful, feels very villagey, and uh, Ben and I have started a little tradition of going there on Christmas Eve, and then we'll be going to Pizza Hut. That's classy, isn't it? Pizza Hut will be uh, for um, the family who are going to be there for Christmas. My sister started this tradition years ago, and we've just kept it up, and it's it's great fun. We all there's usually about twelve of us around the table, and we eat lots of pizza and and wear silly Christmas hats and have a, a thoroughly lovely time. And then it's to my sister's for uh, for Christmas Day. Now this year, I'm the lucky one. Um, my obviously my mum won't be there, but my sister will be there uh, with um, her husband for some of it. Although he's spending time with his family, it gets. When you have lots of different branches of the family, spending Christmas all together can become incredibly complicated. Um, and that slotting the jigsaw puzzle together is, is, is kind of difficult. Uh, thankfully in my family we're usually quite laid back about this sort of thing. We all try and do our best to see each other as much as we can. And if we can't, we can't. But we know we've tried. We know we'll be thinking of each other. So uh, this year there'll be, yeah, my sister, her husband for part of the time, her three children with assorted partners and uh, and her grandchild, my great niece Renee, and there will be my dad and my stepmother. There will also be guest appearances from the Tills, my husband's family, uh, Ben's mum and dad and him of course, and his brother and his uh, and his brother's boyfriend Sasha will all be joining us. They're spending time in a hotel nearby, uh, coming over to join us for Christmas Day. So I get to be with my family and my husband and his family, and I could not be happier about it. We have done this before, and it worked out very, very, very nicely indeed. Um, and the reason why Noel and Richard want, and Sasha and Edward want to stay in a hotel is because I know they're, they're not the kind of people who would ever want to outstay their welcome. They couldn't possibly at my family. Uh, we would be delighted to have them for as long as they wanted to stay there. But I know that they will feel more comfortable being able to say thank you very much for a lovely day and then retiring back to their hotel room. So it's all working out fabulously well. I'm really looking forward to it. I do have to work on Boxing Day. So we'll be getting off in the car very, very early to uh, drive down to Dorset to be with Ben's family, his extended family. And, uh, and then I shall be ensconcing myself in a hotel room with some Wi-Fi and a printer and printing off loads of reports and working as much as I can and as quickly as I can to get the job done so that I can then rejoin the party. And then it's straight back here, back to work properly the next day. So it's going to be a whirlwind whistle-stop Christmas. It often is for me. I, as I say, I've got a big family and we're often very spread out. So I do try to spend as much time with everyone as I can, which means doing a lot of hours in the car. So it just is what it is, isn't it? Now, uh, I want to move on into the proper podcast stuff. 
Roundup wise, it has just been work, podcast questions. No one's posted any questions in the podcast thread. So, uh, this is one of the parts of my podcast that I really, really enjoy doing. So, if you do have any questions for me, it doesn't have to be knitting related, although it can be. It can be knitting related or related to my other uh, career as an actor um, or anything at all, anything about me within reason most most things I'll be happy to answer um, please head over to the Ravelry group if you're not a member do join up there's a nice bunch of people there and it's always very chatty and friendly and uh, and and post your questions to me in the podcast thread podcast questions thread and then I will answer them in the podcast uh, I do sometimes answer things on the forum if it's a very sort of brief thing and it's not really something that I need to chat about here for very much time but I really really enjoy having things to talk about so do come up with some lovely questions for me and post them as soon as you can um, I'm not going to do a what's tat today I'm going to move straight on into a grammar rant now this isn't actually a rant it's not a rant at all um, I have recently and I'm wondering actually if so if anyone will have noticed I'm I'm a big fan of using a dash when I'm when I'm typing and stuff in forms because this is the type this is the movement for typing um, I think I probably type a bit more like that <laughs> I don't really touch type and uh, I like to sort of start a sentence and then have a little aside with dashes and then and then carry on and I've always done space hyphen space but I've recently started using the M dash quite a lot and I really really like it. I've only just recently learned how to do it on my Mac keyboard and I've really only recently properly sorted out in my head when to use the three, three different types of dashes that we use in English punctuation. Now I, uh, I this isn't, as I say, this isn't a rant I would, this is more of a little tutorial, really, a little lesson, because I want to share my newfound love of the M dash, um, and that's E M dash, as written here, uh, as opposed to the N dash, which is E N dash, which is different again from the hyphen. So we use the hyphen all the time. Um, I'm a big fan of the hyphen for uh, joining words together properly and correctly for an adjectival phrase or a phrasal adjective. You can say it whichever way you like. Oh, I'm going to bore myself now, but if there are any grammarians out there, I'm not going to bore myself, I'm going to bore loads of you, I'm sure. I could talk about this all day. Um, so, the hyphen, which is the shortest of the three, and it's just the hyphen key on your, the minus key, if you like, the hyphen key on your keyboard, uh, is uh, there specifically for joining words together. So, if I was going to say, I want uh, the the most up-to-date model you can find, up hyphen to hyphen date. Those three words would be hyphenated because they they are one adjective. They work together as one adjective. So uh, the, the this car is uh, is the top of the range model. Top of the range would all be hyphenated. Be three different hyphens there, and they would be the little tiny ones. Now the n dash uh, is different. It's slightly longer than the hyphen, although not as long as the m dash and is used for uh, ranges of information. So uh, if you were reading and you come across the N dash, you would probably say the word to, or Americans would often say through. Um, so for example, uh, this theatre holds 80, 100 seats. So 80 N dash 100 seats. And you'd read that. 80 to 100 seats. Uh, or it could be a date range. The doctor's surgery is open Monday to Wednesday, Monday, N dash Wednesday. So you use the N dash to separate ranges and things like that. You would never, you would never use it when you're using between or from as part of the sentence. So you wouldn't say uh, this theatre holds between 80 dash 100. You wouldn't say that. You'd say it holds 80 to 100. You wouldn't say, because if you read it out as a word, you wouldn't say between 80 to 100. You'd say between 80 and 100. So that's what you would write. So that's a common uh, error that people using the N dash fall into. And here's the keyboard shortcut. I can't remember uh, how to find the N dash on, on a Mac. Uh, 
or on a PC, in fact, because I don't use it that often. I'm now going to be starting now that I know exactly how to use it. But I am such a big fan of the M dash. Oh, just bash me true. Baby balls jingle. Jingle balls, jingle balls, jingle all the way. That's just what happens there. Less said about that, the better, I think. <laughs> More jingle balls. Uh, the M dash is the longest of the three. The N dash and the M dash get their names uh, because the N dash is the, the width of a typeset N, capital N, and the M dash is the width of a typeset capital M. So those letters are traditionally longer than each other and then longer than the hyphen in turn. So the M dash is what you, it's very, very useful. You can use it parenthetically in a sentence. So in place of brackets, so you might want to say, um, I was going, that, gosh, this is quite difficult to come up with a, I use it all the time, and then coming up with a, uh, an example off the top of my head is really kind of tricky. So if I wanted to say, <laughs> mind blank, whooped, wiped. Um, there's a very important, if not vital, reason why I want to use the M dash and share the information with you. So in that sentence, I would put, you could put, there's a very important brackets, if not vital, reason why I want to. Um, but you're more likely to use the M dash. There's a very important M dash, re, if not vital, M dash, reason why. So you, the bit that you would bracket out, you can put between M dashes and uh, put, yeah. M, you can put in between two M dashes. And the M dashes are not traditionally used with spaces either side. So they, they, they're really obvious on the page and they're a really good key to a, a reader of where to pause, where a certain piece of information is kind of like commented out of the main flow of the information. And I really, really like it. You can also use it in place of a colon. So uh, if you have, uh, you're setting up something in a sentence and then you're paying it off. So you were saying, um, and it was the perfect example of, of what he loved the best, chocolate. Okay, so you could put, it was a perfect example of what he loved the best, colon, chocolate, or you could use the M dash in its place. Um, there are other places you can use these things as well, but I just love it. I think it, it kind of looks a little bit archaic, a little, but a little bit traditional. So when I started using the M dash, particularly parenthetically in pairs, then I, it just took me back to the books, the Agatha Christie books that I used to read, and, and books that were written properly, where people knew how to punctuate things correctly. And I love it. So I wonder if anyone has noticed in my forum posts my newfound love and usage of the M dash. I don't get a chance to use the N dash very often. The M dash, for those of you who are interested, is created on a Mac keyboard by pressing uh, shift and alt and hyphen. Shift and alt and hyphen, all at the same time. And, uh, and on a PC keyboard, I have no idea, so I'll find out and put that down here for you. So I hope people, people will start using the M dash and the M dash and leaving the poor old hyphen to simply its function of joining words together and making compound adjectives or compound phrases. Compound nouns as well. And names, you know, uh, Jean-Paul would be hyphenated with a normal hyphen, not with an M dash, N dash or an M dash. And there we have today's grammar rant. Um, I, I'm actually quite excited about it. I really, really love punctuation. And I know people say, oh, it doesn't matter. It really does help. It, it solves all kinds of ambiguities and, and clears up any misunderstandings in what you've written. If you write correctly, you can be quite succinct, but you can be completely unambiguous. So many people just dash off a sentence without really thinking about how that's going to be read at the other end. And I think, well, here's the ranty part. People don't pay any attention to how their work is going to be read. They just imagine how they thought it and how they would say it and dash it off and off it goes. Texts and emails are so much less formal. I understand that and I'm all for it. However, it just leads to so much confusion. There are so many times when I've looked at something and thought, what do you mean this or this? And actually with a bit of careful thought and correct punctuation, 
all of those problems would fly out of the window. The end ash. I give it to you as my gift. Merry Christmas. You're welcome. <laughs> now you may be wondering why I'm wearing baubles in my beard. <laughs> well, why wouldn't I? It is, after all, Christmas, and this is the Christmas, Merry Christmas episode of the Salt Petition Podcast. And I have to say, I love these baubles. I really, really do. <laughs> they were a gift from a friend. They came through the post. They came through the post a couple of weeks ago, and I had no idea who they were from. Uh, the note inside was not signed. It just said, saw these and thought of you. I don't know anyone else with a, with a mighty beard. Well, my beard is becoming quite mighty these days. It is down to my chest now, um, and I'm loving it for that. Uh, there's, there's a guy I, I pass on the tube platform this morning, in fact. Uh, seems like a long time ago. And uh, he had a really, really lovely, big, thick, bushy beard, and he'd curled his moustache beautifully. Um, and we just sort of clocked each other and caught each other's eyes as we walked past. It was like, we're in the club. <laughs> we understand what it takes, what the commitment it takes to have facial hair such as this. Actually, thinking of which, I'm running out of beard conditioner, so I must get some. I don't want to go away over Christmas and find I can't condition my beard every day. That would be a disaster! So, moving on then into uh, the knitting stuff, because I know that's why you're here. Um, I... I have some stash enhancement. Shall I do it chronologically? Yeah, I will. Um, so, the weekend before last, I went to the Christmas party at, uh, that I've mentioned on here before at John Dunballam of Easy Knit's uh, new studio space. He's literally only moved next door, but it's... Uh, I made the balls jingle again. <laughs> Talking of which, before I move on to stash enhancement, you might be able to see these two very small red baubles here. Now I'm just going to remove them because I want to, I want to share with you because these are a gift, very lovely gift. So they kind of go into stash enhancement, even though they're not stash. Look, they've got our names on them. They're so adorable, and they're tiny, tiny little things. Not as tiny as the ones in my beard but much, much smaller than most of the ones on the tree. Uh, you can see there, that colour better. These were a gorgeous gift from uh, my good friend Alison, who is Alice Mary on Ravelry. And uh, they arrived through the post, out of the blue, with a little message saying uh, that she doesn't have any children to buy silly gifts for this year, so Ben and I would have to do. Well... Alison, thank you so much. I really, really love them. They have... I don't know in the same place. I've just taken them off. Maybe they are. Um, they're... I really, really adore them. We, we haven't actually strung them up yet, but they have been sitting here quite... Quite a lot of our baubles don't have string on, so we just pop them on the end of the branches. I'm fine with that. Um, they're adorable, and thank you. We are very, very happy to be your surrogate children <laughs> for the Christmas season. Um, and... Merry Christmas to you, and with my thanks and Ben's love and thanks as well. Thank you. Uh, so, stash enhancement. I was at John's uh, Christmas party, and of course, um, I had to buy some stuff. I, I've got quite a growing stash of Easy Knits uh, yarn. I love John's sense of colour. He's so bright, so vibrant. Um, and the, what I found really, really didn't, didn't disappoint. He gave me this lovely... Uh, Easy Knits tote bag, knit with colour, quite right too. And his website is, of course, easyknits.co.uk. And he has such a fabulous range of, of things on there. But uh, these are the... I came with two skeins. This, I've not seen from his range before, and I really, really love it. Look how vibrant those this particular green is here. Um, and then around the back, oh, it's just lovely, isn't it? This is the Deeply Wicked. So all of, all of John's Deeply Wicked uh, colours, they have lots of different colours within them, and they are all variegated, and this one's called Pond Hopper, but they're all vibrant, big, deeply saturated uh, colourways. I adore them. Pond Hopper is 100% superwash merino. It's a four-ply fingering weight, it's 100 grams, uh, and it's 400 metres. It's a fairly, fairly standard 
base in terms of what you get for it, but these colours are so, so gorgeous. The, this actually is showing a bit more green on camera. This is quite a gold colour. A um, little bit more true true there. No, it's, it's, it's got a proper gold, sort of burnished orangey tones to it rather than just that, that olivey green there. But other than that, the colour is showing up very well. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, and it will make a really, really fine and fancy pair of socks. Now, I love knitting vanilla socks, I really do. Sometimes I am cuffed down, and sometimes I am my own toe-ups recipe. Um, I enjoy both equally, I think, and uh, when I get yarn like this, I don't need to do anything with the socks. I like to let the yarn do the work um, because I, I don't want to go to all the trouble of putting in a cable or a, a textured stitch pattern and finding that the, the colours in the yarn break up the pattern too much and you can't see it. Or vice versa, that the pattern that I've put in interferes with what the yarn is doing. For example, I'm wearing these stripy socks today and again, that's just... A completely vanilla sock that I wanted to let the yarn do the work for and I love them they're perfect so I know that a lot of the yarn that I've got from John is going to end up in plain old vanilla socks which I love knitting and I love wearing and certainly when you've got colors like this what's not to love hey hmm? the other uh, is one of John's gobstoppers range now Many of you will know that I've been really into my neons recently. Obviously, I've knitted the Allial hat, which is pink and uh, yellow. Clearly very pink and very yellow. Blows out the camera no end, but looks fabulous on. Um, I really, really like it. Still haven't had a chance to take photographs of this, I'm afraid, so the, uh, the pattern isn't ready to release. But... Hopefully I will fairly soon. Um, but of course it's only pink and yellow. Where's the orange? Where's the green from my luminous socks from the 80s days? Well, John has a gobstopper, which incorporates everything I could possibly want in a fluorescent colourway. Isn't that outrageous? Absolutely outrageous. It could not be brighter. It's called, oh, I can't remember what it's called. The, the things come off. I think it's called When Clowns Go High Viz or something like that. Um, and it's orange, yellow, pink, and green in the largest fluorescent colours you can possibly imagine. And I absolutely love it. This is not variegated. This is self-striping. Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is self-striping. So this, most definitely, is going to be a pair of toe-ups and I will just keep knitting until I run out. Isn't it amazing? I absolutely love it. I nearly swore then I love it so much. John, thank you so much for providing with the perfect colourway for my neon indulgence at the moment. <laughs> now the other stash enhancement is uh, is not something that I've bought. It's something that somebody sent to me through the post. Um, where to begin? Okay, it's a it's a kit. It's a a project bag. It comes as a kit on her Etsy store. So let me let me let me go back before I show it off. So I was contacted by SS, who is Crit Yum on uh, Ravelry, and she's Crit Yum handmade on Etsy. So that's um, Crit Yum handmade. Dot Etsy dot com is the easiest way to find her and uh, she contacted me saying that she's got she, she'd like to send me something that's a little bit unusual in terms of the project bag world and she's right it's brilliant I love it um, and it arrived only a couple of days ago so perfectly in time for doing this podcast now these are sold as kits on her Etsy store um, and they come as a kit with a, with a skein of yarn as well. And I've got the skein of yarn as well, but I'll show you that in a moment. I want to show you the bag, first of all. I'm going to take everything out, because I do want to show you the bag on its own. Uh, this is her card. So, I only know her as SS. It's how she signs everything, so I'm assuming that's how she likes to be known. I have no idea what SS may stand for. Um, but it says on here, a little bit of Desi for your life. Handmade design... Handmade 
hand-dyed yarns, project bags, notion pouches, downloadable patterns and stitch markers. She's a designer as well, she makes some lovely, lovely things. And uh, there we are, that's the logo. So, what is this I hear you say? Let me show you. It's a project bag which is made of fabric and clear plastic. I know, right? I know! Who knew such things existed? I certainly didn't. This is a really, really nice size. You're not going to get a sweater in here, but a scarf or uh, a pair of socks. Very, very amply for a pair of socks. And it's all stitched. You know, it's not just glue gun together. It's the, the plastic is properly stitched together. It's got a little loop here so you can attach things to that. It's got a hand strap, which I love. Now, and I'm assuming... I don't know if this is... Uh, design or just happy accident but the way the zip is on here when it's hanging from your wrist the opening is at the top that to me is really important because if the zip were on the other way and I wanted to be knitting out and about then the opening if I wanted to be knitting from it would be here which could lead things to fall out however I can zip it almost closed and have the yarn coming out of there straight to the project which is brilliant I love the fact that who doesn't have lots of projects on the go in lots of different project bags? Sometimes you, you can't really remember what's in what. Not a problem. Get a few of these under your belt and you can just and you can just have a quick glance and go, that's the project I want. Grab it and go. It's brilliant. It's got a very nice little uh, shell. I guess you could use it a progress marker. You'd have to You'd have to take it off, it's, uh, it's clipped on there. Um, but it's, it's really nice, the, the, the detail is lovely with the, uh, the zip co uh, end being with this tag on it that all coordinates. It's got uh, SS's logo and label there. And that's the bag, that's the bag. It's beautiful, this is really stiff fabric as well. I, I really quite like it. Um, both sides, inside, so it's not, it's not so the, uh, the line of stitching across here, that's where the plastic stops, but it's housed um, on both sides by, by the matching fabric. Can you see that there? And it's got this lovely manly plaid. I was given this, uh, where's the letter? For some reason, the letter was all the way across the other side of the room. It says, dear Nathan, thank you so much for putting out your podcast for all of us to enjoy. Well, it's my pleasure and thank you. Uh, I love that you give out so much helpful information through it. I'm sending along two sets of medium-sized clear project bags. One for you, and one for your podcast. Yes! Thank you so much. It's incredibly, incredibly generous. Um, it has, and I'll get on to it, I'll show you what it has in it in a minute, um, and and then some yarn as well. She says, I know you're not afraid of colours, but I thought the fab I bought this fabric with you in mind. I hope you like it. Well I really, really do. Because um I as I have been explaining, I do love bright colours. But I I also really do like muted colours, the the kind of colours that tend to be thought of as more masculine. I like that a lot as well. Uh so this this fabric is really, really great. Uh I really very, very much like it. So, what else comes in the bag? Well, it has this little notions pouch, which is a little, kind of a sort of pyramid style thing. You know those, uh, those squash, orange squash uh, pyramids that you could buy? A bit like that. Um, this is all made in Canada, so this has all come winging its way to me from Canada. And inside, some chunky stitch markers. So if you're knitting a blanket or a really super bulky thing, You've got these fabulous stitch markers, which I like. They're not, they're not heavy at all. Um, they must be metal of some kind, but they're really not heavy. And on there, you've got a contrasting one for a beginning of a round or something that you need to mark off, and then all these matching ones. And there are eight. It's a very, very useful set if you have um, larger needles and knitting something of a more chunky dimension. And that, you can pop anything else you like in here. This has a little matching shell. I think it's a little bit smaller, is it, than the shell that's on the zip, or are they the same? No, they are. One is one is smaller. That's kind of cute. The, the bigger bag has the bigger shell on it. Look at that. Nice. 
and those very very useful. It's all part of the set. It's not just uh, just put together for me. These are sold as a set on CritchamHandmade.etsy.com, and it also comes with this. Aha! What's that? I hear you ask. Well, it's a DPN cover. Two snap fasteners there, poppers as I would call them. Um, and here inside, you can house your DPNs. So. Uh, <laughs> Don't laugh, I haven't made any progress on my stranded Latvian mittens at all. Not planning to until after Christmas. Um, however, I have pulled it out because this is how you would use your, uh, your DPN holder. If you're knitting a sock or a glove like this on short DPNs, then when, you've, when you're done, you can just house it in there and it stops everything from falling off your needles. Uh, and when you're done again you just flatten the work pop it back in there and pop the poppers I can find the poppers one and two and that will keep your work from uh, falling off its needles while you are in transit so very very useful so there we go that's the one that's my one and this is the one that comes from the set so you get, in your set, I, mean, I think you could buy all this stuff separately if you want to, but if you wanted a matching set, it's all coordinating, look. You've got the, the Notions pouch with the stitch markers in it, the DPN holder and the bag all working together very, very nicely. It's a lovely, lovely set. Very, very nice. That's not all. With it comes some hand-dyed yarn. Now this hand-dyed yarn is yummy. It's incredibly soft actually. It's super wash merino and 25% nylon, 436 yards to 100 grams. So it's quite, um, it's it's quite, it's a bit thinner um, and so quite longer, but this is the base is called the Rosanna socks. And this yarn, one for me, one for you, uh, is called the plaid colorway. And Died by hand in Canada from ethically, ethically sourced wool, which is great, of course. Now this, what's brilliant about this is it has been specifically designed, dyed, to work with this colour. So you can see the little flecks of red in there to match the little red uh, lines. And there's the paler colours and the darker colours, the greys and the blues. It looks a little bit more purple on screen than it actually is. It really does match this very, very well. So all of that is one set. Now, if you go to uh, have a look at this set's shop, you will see that this is a very, very generous gift indeed. Um, I'm not, I'm not for a second going to suggest that. Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say there. It, it's not cheap, but it's really, really lovely quality stuff. And there's a lot for your money. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying, I'm not, that's not in any way a criticism. It shouldn't be cheap. You get a lot. What I'm trying to say is, is that there's a lot here. It makes it a very, very generous gift. I, I, I put that all very, very badly. I'm not going to say it again. I'm not going to edit that out. But this gift is wonderful. Um, and it would make someone a really, really beautiful wrapped up all in one present. Uh, I know Christmas is out of the way now by the time you get this and it'll be too late for that but um, any knitters in your life that you uh, you have a, you know have a birthday coming up why not head over to SS's Etsy store and get one of these kits they're really really very very special indeed so how how are you gonna get your hands on one I'm keeping one um, and SS, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's so generous. Um, I really hope that me being able to talk about it like this on the podcast will do very well for you um, in terms of people coming to your Etsy store that might not otherwise have heard of you before. Um, that will make me very happy and hopefully make you happy too. Um, so how can anyone get their hands on this? Well, it's not going to be enough to ask, answer a question. This is going to be a... Uh, not really a knit along, but I want I want to get to know what you're knitting over Christmas. 
And so if you are planning to cast something on specifically over Christmas, now this is not, um, this is not Christmas knitting as such, as in for gifts. What I mean is when you've done all the Christmas knitting, when the sprouts have been boiled and eaten and passed through our bodies the way that sprouts can, when you're sitting down and enjoying a, a bit of Turkish delight and a liqueur chocolate at the end of your frantic Christmas time, when you're sitting down knitting, what are you knitting for yourself? Something new, so something that has to be cast on over the festive period. I'm not saying Christmas Day itself, but I'm interested in what you're casting on. And what I want to do is I'm going to open up a thread on my group on Ravelry called the Christmas Cast On Thread. And it'll be a nice way that we can share information with each other about what we're knitting. I'm going to be casting something on over Christmas. It might just even be a new pair of socks. Maybe the pond hopper, I don't know. Um, and and post your things in there. And when, I'll give it a little while. I don't know how long yet, a month maybe, maybe a bit more. So we can, it can be a cardigan, it can be a pair of socks, it can be a bauble, anything at all that you're casting on over your Christmas period. Um, or your holiday period if you don't celebrate Christmas, but I do, and I'm allowed to talk about Christmas. Um, and, uh, Anything that you've cast on over the Christmas period, put photographs of the cast on. Put, you know, start, please start with a cast on, and then we'll see the progress as you go on. You can add to your own thread, or you can add, more, add to your own post, or you can add more posts as you go along. I don't mind which. Um, I'll start the ball rolling, and I want you to pick up the thread. So, as and when I close the Christmas cast on thread, I will choose one lucky winner from the people who've taken part. So the rules are, you need to be a member of the group, you need to follow me on Instagram and YouTube if you don't mind. Uh, so I'm, I'm being thirsty for your follows. Isn't that really falsing? But this is, this is a special gift, um, and so you're going to make you work for it. Post your cast on photograph over Christmas in the cast on thread. As long as we've, as long as you've posted by the 1st of January, uh, of your cast on just show like the first row or something you've done um, and then uh, we can watch it grow together and then you'll be eligible to win this wonderful wonderful kit really very rather special indeed so in terms of what's on uh, what, what am I knitting in terms of whips um, I was very very close to quoting Dan and Kay then <laughs> what's on your needles Dan and Kay um, Ben and I are watching, we're catching up on Dan and Kay, we're a couple of episodes behind, we're watching it every night before we go to bed, and so it's right there in my head. Um, also, I've been watching uh, Miss Labelli and catching up on her uh, Vlogmas, um, I'm a few days behind, but I've been thoroughly enjoying all of that. Um, always a big fan of Eric Lutz of Sticks Plus Wine. Oh, oh! Rib magazine is out. Before I move on to whips, Rib magazine is out. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't got my copy. It's on its way to me from Canada, I believe. Eric has sent it to me. But it's got my pattern in it. My Finally, I can talk about the stalactite scarf. Uh, the stalactite scarf is a design that I put together for the first issue of Rib, and it's published in there. And I'm really, really pleased with it. It was knit with Casbar uh, Handmaiden... Casbar... I was getting it wrong. Handmaiden Fine Yarns Make Casbar Sock. That's right. In the pewter colourway. Really, really love it. It's the same yarn that I made my Invisi Crown hat in, which I have since frogged. So the pattern is out there, and all the photographs are on the pattern for the Invisi Crown. It's a free pattern if you want to download it. Um, and I made it, it just stretched too much, I made it too big. However, I'm going to re-knit it um, slightly smaller because the yarn is so beautiful. And I want. I bought two skeins, and I used about a skein and a half for the scarf. Um, but I wanted to do something with the leftovers, so I knitted the hat. Love it, but frogged it. Will knit it again. So that's the yarn I use. And the interesting thing about the reason why it's called the stalactite scarf is it's much wider at one end than it is at the other. It narrows to a point. Um, it's quite unusual, and it's all done with linen stitch and variations of linen stitch, and it creates these, these wonderful sort of long, elegant lines that work their way up and join together as this scarf develops. So there's a, quite a lot of interesting uh, elements to it. Um, it's not double knitting, it is only one colour. Um, it's quite delicately patterned, so be careful what kind of yarn you use for it should you choose to make it. But it's 
it would be perfect with uh, like an evening coat, something like that, if you're wearing a suit and you just want uh, something to sort of drape over your shoulders. It's that kind of scarf, like a gentleman's scarf. I'm really very, very proud of it. And uh, I'm hoping that lots of people will buy Rib Magazine for all the other fantastic patterns that are in there. I know there's some. There's one from Eric himself, there's one from my good friend Shannon Fisher, there's one from Mina Phillip. Um, I can't remember the full list, but it's a really, really lovely, lovely selection of things. And, and it's, of course, Rib Magazine is aimed at men, male knitters, and people who knit for men. So it's great. I'm so happy to support the endeavour. And Eric and Devon have done Derek from uh, Handmade and Woolly. Handmade and Woolly, is that what it's actually called? Oh, God, I always get that wrong. Handmade and Woolen. Sorry. Handmade and Woolen uh, podcast. Um, They've done such a brilliant job of seeing this through from concept to first edition. I cannot wait to get my mitts on my own copy and then I can show you properly next time. Anyway, so moving on to whips. Um, not a great deal to share with you at the moment. I haven't had any time for knitting. I was hoping that the Allial socks, which um, this is the Allial hat, and I decided, uh, you've seen this on last time, you saw last time a pair of socks that I've made from the same same yarn, same pattern as well. Uh, well, they're coming along quite nicely. Here's the the first of the pair. Hee hee! I love it. Um, I think I, sh I showed you this. I'm sure I did. Um, and of course, it's got the, the two colour cables running down the side and the matching heel flap, cuff and toe. Now, uh, I am reversing the colours and reversing the cable. I was hoping to have this finished. I nearly got to the toe. I'm about five rounds away from doing the, turning the toe, not turning the toe, closing the toe. Um, however, I've reversed all the colours. So whereas we've got pink, yellow, pink, I've now got yellow, pink, yellow. And if you can see, I've also reversed not only the the orientation of the colours, but the way the yarn, the way the cables cross over each other, so they're completely symmetrical in terms of that. So mismatched in terms of uh, heel flap, cuffs, and what will be the toes, but uh, symmetrical in terms of uh, body patterning. So I'm really, I keep sort of coming up to the screen there because my phone is showing it's low battery. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting these finished. I love the way they come together. I like the mismatched fraternal twins. Um, they're clearly not identical twins, but they're, they're they're very happy bedfellows. And I'm very close to knitting to to finishing. And I've still got like loads of yarn. This, these are like never-ending balls of yarn. This is the uncommon thread tough sock, which is eighty twenty uh, BFL and nylon, I believe. And I look obviously I've used a bit more of the pink because. Um, because this had more pink in the cuff than it had yellow, and I've already used one sock where I've got all the pink bits done, whereas on this one I haven't quite finished the yellow toe. But there's just loads left. I could probably make a third sock out of this. So that's nearly done. I may finish this this evening. I, well, certainly I'll get onto the toe this evening. Um, I doubt I'll finish it completely, but I'll give it a good go as and when I've... Uh, Oh, no, that's not true. I'm going to edit this and upload. It's not going, to, not going to do any knitting at all. What was I saying? So that is pretty much everything that I've been knitting uh, recently. I just haven't had the time or the brain space for anything. I've been coming home, brain dead, wrapping myself up in my hexa hap and getting so much hap love out of it. And uh, that's it. I have no effer who's... And that is my only bit of, of whippage, apart from, of course... <laughs> no pressure, no blame, no shame. Um, I do still have the two scarves on the go, but I haven't touched those since you last uh, tuned in. So I've got the piano number three, which is my January project, get that finished, and the uh, Il Barato scarf, which I will also get finished. Um, but that really is it. So this is just a, a small, hour-long podcast episode this time. And... I just want to wish you all 
from the bottom of my heart, a very, very special Merry Christmas this year. 2016 has been a difficult year for lots of reasons for lots of people, and I, for one, will be very glad to see the back of it. I look forward to what 2017 will bring, um, with some nervousness, politically speaking. However, I think a fresh start is always good, and I want to thank each and every one of you for spending time with me, listening to me burble on, and sharing with me my knitting tribulations, and delighting with me in my delight at knitting, and the and the things that I uh, get up to, and hearing about my crazy this, that, and the other that I always get up to as well. Um, it really means a lot to me that that you stop by and that you spend your time with me. Um, I, I love doing this podcast. I certainly wouldn't do it if, if no one was watching. So it really is a joy to me that, that so many people do. And I get such a lot of lovely messages from people saying how much they enjoy what I'm doing. And that's, that's really, really lovely. I've made a lot of friends through doing this podcast over the last year and a half. And I'm not, this sounds like I'm signing off. I'm really, really not at all. Um, I'm not planning to stop anytime soon, um, or at all, or ever, if I can help it. Um, but I just want to, to thank each and every one of you for spending your time with me. I've made some wonderful friends in the podcast world, uh, Dan and Kay and Eric and David and Katie and Mina um, and many, many others, Shannon, many others as well. And people from the non-podcasting world as well who are the knitting world and you are the knitting world and you are very special people and thank you very very much so with that i shall sign off i hope that your christmas and your festive season is exactly that festive restful colorful enjoyable filled with family and friends and if you're not a family and friends person over christmas and you uh, are sitting down by yourself to do some knitting just relish in that time spent doing what you enjoy doing. I know that any chance I get to do any knitting over Christmas, I will pick up my needles and I will thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. Don't forget, post your Christmas cast-ons in the cast-on thread for a chance to win that bag. I will see you in the new year. Merry, Merry Christmas. And now this podcast episode really is a finished object. But just remember, life is a work in progress. Just take it one stitch at a time. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. See you in 2017. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh.